Speaking relatively, few women were recognized for their outstanding bravery during the Second World War. But one woman, an allied spy whom the German Gestapo referred to as White Mouse, would have been weighed down by the medals she was awarded, if she had actually accepted all of them. If you haven't guessed already, we're referring to the indomitable Nancy Wake, whose actions in the Second World War deserve far more attention than they already get. While Nancy Wake was born to a pair of Kiwis in 1912, her family made the voyage to the land down under two years later. At 20 years of age, having been infatuated with the prospect of travel for all her life, she departed Sydney Harbour for the United States and ultimately London. While in New York, she said that, despite the prohibition, she had never consumed so much alcohol in her short life. Once in London, she enrolled in a journalism course and went on to make use of her formal education in Paris, where she sold enough articles to press agencies to scrape by and drink a little wine on the side. At this point in time, Hitler was in power and Nancy was starting to see the consequences of his soon-to-be calamitous reign. Jews were fleeing Germany and Nancy became friendly with many of these refugees. It was when Nancy travelled to Austria in 1934 to sell some articles that she first saw Jews being persecuted, however. In Nancy's words, It was in Vienna that I formed my opinion of the Nazis. I resolved there and then that if I ever had the chance, I would do anything, however big or small, stupid or dangerous, to try and make things more difficult for their rotten party. More than hatred or anger, I felt a deep loathing for the Nazis. Back in Paris, Nancy met a Frenchman named Henri Fioc in 1937 and married him about a month later at the start of the Second World War. France, which Nancy now considered her home, had not yet felt the unchecked wrath of the German war machine, but it soon of course would and Nancy's life would be turned completely upside down. While the Germans blitzkrieged their way into France, Nancy did her part by serving as an ambulance driver. When France fell, Nancy kept to the shadows and used her charisma when stealth wasn't an option. In her words, a little powder and a little drink on the way, and I'd pass German posts with a wink and say, do you want to search me? A woman could get out of a lot of trouble that a man could not. Until late 1942, Nancy focused her energy in getting Jews and stranded allied soldiers out of France, primarily under the resistance organization known as the Pat O'Leary Line. In unison with other escape lines, such as the Comet Line and the Shelburne Escape Line, the Pat O'Leary Line helped more than 5,000 Allied military personnel get out of German-occupied Europe. Nancy's contributions to the escape line were so great that she earned a reputation among the Gestapo, who nicknamed her White Mouse and placed a 5 million franc bounty on her head. After the Germans occupied Vichy, France in November 1942, and after her network was all but destroyed by a pair of traitors, Nancy was feeling a little more heat than even she was comfortable with. She decided she would flee France to Spain, although her husband would not go with her, a decision he would come to very much regret. After a series of mishaps and deceptions, Nancy eventually reached Britain, while her husband was captured, tortured, and executed by the Gestapo. But that wasn't even half of Nancy Wake's incredible story. While she was in Britain, Nancy joined the Special Operations Executive or simply the SOE, which had only positive things to say about her, noting that she was a real bombshell and an excellent shot who put the men to shame by her careful spirit and strength of character. Nancy was taught how to kill, survive and handle vital intelligence. By April 1944, she was more than ready for the field and the SOE threw her out of a plane over the Auvergne province of occupied France. After parachuting to the ground, she worked to collect and allocate parachute dropped war material and other supplies to the French resistance, all in the lead up to the Allied invasion of France. In May, after a resistance organization she had been working with decided to mobilize en masse 
And after the Germans handed much of said organization's backside to it on a silver platter, Nancy broke stride with the fleeing resistance fighters and went right back at the Germans. Borrowing a bicycle, she rode it some 500 kilometers or 310 miles in 72 hours, all to retrieve some important radio codes that had been left behind, and also to find an SOE radio with which she could contact the SOE headquarters back in Britain. Nancy got a whole lot more blood on her hands after that. She was involved in several significant altercations with the Germans, during which she attacked German convoys and staved off German attacks on French resistance camps. She even participated in a raid on a German HQ, which resulted in the deaths of 38 Germans. On a separate occasion, Nancy found out that some of her men had captured a young female German spy, but hadn't the guts to put her to death. Nancy, a death machine at this point, executed the girl herself. Later in life, Nancy said, I was not a very nice person and it didn't put me off my breakfast. She even claimed to have killed an SS sentry with her bare hands, which is best described, again, in Nancy's own words. They'd taught this judo chop stuff with the flat of the hand at SOE and I practiced away at it, but this was the only time I used it and it killed him alright. Following the liberation of France in August 1944, Nancy went back to Britain with a slew of new stories under her belt. After the war, Nancy bounced between Britain and Australia quite a bit and pursued careers in both intelligence and politics for a while. Working for the Royal Air Force, she met an RAF officer and married him in 1957. Retiring to Sydney, Australia in 1985, Nancy published her autobiography, which took its title from the one the Gestapo had given her the White Mouse. Straight after the war and all the way up until 2006, Nancy was awarded bucket loads of medals, some of which she rejected and some of which she sold. Hilariously, she said there was no point in keeping the medals. I'll probably go to hell and they'd melt anyway. After her husband perished, Nancy moved to London where she got tipsy and told war stories until she died two years shy of a century in August 2011. They never had any children. If it wasn't already clear at this point, Nancy Wake was quite a character, as well as of tremendous importance to the Allied cause. While her story has been told time and time again, we still don't think it gets the attention it deserves, and we hope we've done a solid job relaying it here in this video. But what do you think? Had you heard of Nancy Wake before today? Do you think she was one of the most audacious female spies of the entire Second World War? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And just before you head off to those suggested videos, guys, make sure you check out our new channel called The Braved, where we go deep into all different eras of history to take a look at some of the most badass men and women from these eras. All of these stories told in a really high quality video format. I'm sure you guys will love it. That's the first link in the description below. And if you just want to check out our music channel, Relax Jack, that link is also in the description below. And if you want access to a behind the scenes Discord server and exclusive videos, make sure you consider donating to our Patreon. And lastly, if you just want to check out our wider community, join us on Instagram, Facebook, and Discord. All of these links, once again, guys, are in the description below. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you learned something new.